You're right there, it's Tim Golf 5, Tango Mike again. Um, I'm going to look today at dipoles, uh, inverted V, flat top, and uh, what the differences are. If we uh, look at the screen here then, we can see we've got a, a traditional half wave flat top dipole. All right, uh, we've got it eight and a half meters above ground level. And as, as you can see on the, uh, it's just about, just over half a wavelength above the ground, but 0.54 I think it is, all right? Um, and as you can see from the screen there, it's a pretty typical sort of um, uh, pattern we see there, okay? Uh, we see, for example, at the elevation angle, uh, at about 10 degrees at the top there in yellow, we've got a gain of about uh, 2.7 dB. And in fact, on the right-hand side, and I've just highlighted in yellow at the bottom there, that the, the peak gain is about 7.4 dB, and uh, the, uh, it's at about 27 degrees. So it's, it's a reasonable antenna, so a traditional sort of uh, dipole that you find as a flat top at a half wavelength. And if we look together now at the, the left-hand diagram there, you can see that's the, the azimuth pattern, as if you're flying right over the top of the antenna. And if you look at that, on the left-hand side, you've got the letter Y, that's the Y-axis at, say, what's that, 9 o'clock. Uh, if you literally draw a line right across the middle to 3 o'clock on the opposite side, that's how the dipole has actually been set up. So you can see that basically the majority of the, of the RF is being shot uh, broadside to the dipole, and uh, much less, or appreciably less anyway, on the ends. So you tend to get nulls on the end of flat top dipoles and of course you've got your lobes, your main source of energy, coming off broadside. All right, so that's traditional, nothing spellbinding or different there. And it's pretty good. I mean, if you look back at the diagram again, we've got about a, uh, as I said, the top there, 10 degrees off the horizon, 2.7 dB. But of course the trade-off is that unlike a vertical, a vertical is omnidirectional, a dipole, you've got some weaker areas around the ends, okay, in terms of RF being shot out. Let's look at the next example then. Now we've got the inverted V dipole, all right? So we've got a centimeter halfway wave inverted V dipole. The legs are at 90 degrees, so basically we've got the legs at about 90 degrees from each other, okay? You don't want them any less than that because you start to introduce some, some cancellation of your RF, but 90 degrees or more is perfectly fine for the inverted V. So 90 degrees is really the narrowest you want to put it before you encounter some of those issues. So looking back at the diagram again, then we can see that on the right-hand side, we've now got some of our RF shooting off at slightly higher angles. At the very top in yellow, we can see that unlike, uh, what was it, just over 2 dB at 10 degrees with the flat top, we've now got about 0 0.5 dB. So we've lost about 1.5 dB there in terms of gain, all right? If we look back again, uh, the bottom bit in yellow there, we can see that our peak elevation now is at, th our peak gain is at an elevation of 30 degrees. So we we're shooting RF slightly higher, not much, but slightly higher than the flat top. And our uh, maximum gain is about one and a half dB down on the, on the flat top. So we're just shooting off about six dB of, of gain at about 30 degrees. Still a very, very decent antenna, okay? You're still gonna make some good contacts with this. Um, you know, 10 degrees off the horizon at half a dB isn't, uh, isn't gonna be a top gun, but you're certainly gonna be able to make some good contacts and probably still works in DX with this antenna as well. So we'll combine the two, we can do this on MMNA, we can combine the, the far field plots and everything like that. So if we look at this again together here, in uh, red, we have the flat top, and in black, we've got the inverted V. And if you look at the right-hand far fill plot, we can see that in marked in yellow there on the bottom left-hand side of that right-hand diagram, that's about 10 degrees. And we can see there's a difference there. The, uh, the red one, that's the flat top dipole, has, has a greater gain at those lower angles. But you know, um, overall, it's not a, uh, a massively different antenna, really. Um, the gain is less. Uh, there's reasons for that. One of the main reasons is that the legs are closer to the ground, so we're introducing greater ground loss into this antenna as well now. But still, a perfectly reasonably good performing antenna. The other thing, looking back at this, is that, again, if you look at the left-hand uh, azimuth pattern, you can see that actually at both these, uh, both these antennas at their sort of angles of peak gain, which are quite close to each other anyway, one's 30 degrees and one's 20, 27 degrees, I've marked in yellow there on that left-hand uh, diagram the fact that the, um, the inverted V has a slightly more omnidirectional coverage. You can see there's less loss, if you like, 
Uh, it's not a very good term, but there's a there's greater gain, if I should say, off the ends of the inverted V antenna than you have off the end of the flat top. So actually, one of the um, well, one of the advantages, if you like, I suppose, of an inverted V is that you have a little bit more gain off the ends of it, which makes it a bit more of an omnidirectional antenna. And in fact, with an inverted V, you bring the uh, sort of natural impedance, if you like, of a dipole down from about 72 ohms to near a 50. And also by, by bringing the antenna that bit closer to the ground, you're actually making it electrically longer. So if you look at the SWR plot here, you can see that in fact, the inverted V antenna, instead of being resonant at about 18.1, like the flat top, is actually resonant at, well, 17.28, 17.3. So uh, effectively, we've got a much uh, longer antenna. And in fact, uh, we basically are increasing the, uh, oh, we're increasing it by about 5%. Look, that's about right, isn't it? So um, when we change a flat top dipole to an inverted V, what we're effectively doing it is making it probably easier to match, if anything, for 50 ohm coax, and we're actually making it just that little bit longer too. So what happens then if we lower that inverted V dipole even closer, get, for, get closer to the ground? So we've got the apex now, as we can see on the screen here, at five and a half meters above ground. What's that? About um, in imperial measurement, probably about 17 and a half feet or something. And the ends are about two and a half meters above ground level. That's about eight foot. You don't want to be any much lower than that because you want the ends of the dipole away from uh, the hands of small children on climbing fences and things uh, because of the high voltages. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now I put in brackets as well, or well, I can tell you that at five and a half meters above ground level, the uh, antenna at, at the apex is about a third of a wavelength high. So if you were looking at this as a 40 meter dipole, it would be about 13 meters above the ground, which is kind of the limit that a lot of us mortals can put a, a 40 meter dipole, okay? Because you can basically extrapolate what you've got here for a lot of other antennas as well, because it's the, it's the actual height in terms of the wavelength above ground that matters here really, in terms of modeling this across different bands, all right? So, if we were looking at a 40 meter antenna here, the apex would be about, what's that, 13 meters, that's about 40 something feet above ground. And the ends are about uh, a sixth of a wavelength off the ground for this. So for a 40 meter antenna, what's that, about seven meters, about 20 feet off the ground, something like that. So it's kind of getting towards our traditional sort of 40 meter dipole configuration, isn't it? Except in this case, it's for 17 meters. And as you can see, looking at the, the far field plot on the right hand side there, we've now got more of a, a bubble of RF occurring here. And if you look at the very top in yellow, we now see compared to the flat top and even to the higher inverted V, we've got a much less, uh, much less gain at, at that low angle of 10 degrees. Now 10 degrees, by the way, I've picked as a reasonable angle to look at in terms of DX. All right, you can look at 5, you can look at 15, I'm just looking at 10. Okay, so at 10 degrees off the horizon, we're looking at what, minus 4 dB, minus 4.1 dB. Um, you can also see on in yellow, towards the bottom there, that our peak gain is 4.4 dB at 51 degrees off the horizon. So we're now beginning to shoot our RF at slightly higher levels, or higher angles, I should say, not levels, higher angles compared to the, uh, the other higher inverted V and of course the flat top as well. Not a deal breaker, but it's going to make things hard, that bit harder uh, to work DX. And in fact, if we go back to the the, the, um, the lower uh, inverted V, where are we? Here we go. On the left-hand side, what I forgot to show you there was the azimuth. That's basically where you're flying right over the top of the antenna and looking down. And if you remember what I said before, if you look at the screen there on the left, you have Y, which is the uh, where the antenna can be drawn right across the middle from 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock in that diagram. And as you can see, at its peak sort of elevation of 50 degrees, peak gain at 50, 51 degrees, we've basically got a very omnidirectional antenna, okay? Which proves the point that when dipoles are quite low to the ground, not mega, but quite low to the ground in terms of their wavelength, we begin to see a reduction in gain because we've got ground loss playing a bigger part, and we're also seeing a more omnidirectional uh, shape to the uh, to the RF. If you look then at the uh, the higher angle takeoff gain of 45 degrees, I've taken that as a sort of baseline. Uh, we can see there's nothing in it with these antennas. Now, 45 degree takeoff in the UK, you'll be quite strong into Europe. Um, 
no problem at all. 1,000, 1,500 mile contact shouldn't be too much of a problem, really, at that sort of gate. So let's look at some of the conclusions. So first of all, dipoles as a flat top at a half wavelength in height have good gain at low angles. So it helps for DX. Making a dipole in inverted V makes it electrically longer than a flat top dipole at the same apex height, as we said before. And probably that uh, lower inverted V will be even longer electrically than even the one before, uh, one slightly above it as an inverted V. And then, if we're looking again at drawing one or two other conclusions with this, inverted V dipoles have a lower impedance, so they're closer to 50 ohm match, so in fact they're actually easier to match. And in fact, the narrower the legs, the angle between the legs, the closer you get to 50 ohms. So if you have quite a, a shallow inverted V, say at 120, 150 degrees, then it's going to be closer to 72, 75 ohms. Uh, it'll be further away from 50, but either way, dipoles are fairly easy to match. We're not going to look at things like balance at feed points and stuff like this. We're not looking at that today. We're just looking purely at the, the sort of traditional, the expected sort of impedance you'll find at the feed point, all right? And also, uh, inverted V dipoles with an apex at a half wavelength high and with at least a 90 degree angle, like the second one we looked at, between the legs, still perform respectively. I mean, the, you know, it was 2 dB down uh, at 10 degrees. Uh, compared with the flat top at a half wavelength up, but that gate gapping gain at lower takeoff angle reduces as the angle between the legs is increased. So actually, if you make that, if you manage to make that inverted V a bit of a shallower inverted V, a bit more like that rather than like that, then you'll find that actually that gap, that 2 dB gap at 10 degrees compared with the flat top at a half wavelength high will begin to narrow. All right, so again, that 90 degree angle is basically, if you want to look at it in this way, kind of a worst case, if you like, all right? So that's pretty interesting to see that as well. And for the final lesson, going back to the screen, is at the bottom, the flatter the dipole, the better for low angle takeoff. And finally, a low height inverted V dipole will have a noticeably lower gain compared with a higher flat top dipole at around 10 degrees, where we said that. And in fact, the, the very much lower height one we've looked at there has a difference of just under 7 dB. 7 dB worse off compared with the flat top at the half wavelength height. But as we showed earlier, look, at around 45 degrees takeoff, performance just as well. Um, so useful, as we see there, for about 1,000 mile or 1,500 kilometer, maybe 2,000 maybe 2, kilometer contacts as well. And inverted V dipoles gives us a more omnidirectional pattern too. And if you're thinking about a HF antenna idea for your garden, or maybe your first HF antenna idea at home, then um, have a look at this, and hopefully that'll give you some uh, food for thought and maybe a little bit of inspiration too. Thanks for watching, take care now, 73.